Hello and welcome to another podcast episode. We're going to talk about the blues. Uh, we'll work in C minor. I'll mention that the um, excerpt that I did or the, the intro that I did in the shorts on the YouTube channel the other day, um, that's a minor blues in C sharp minor. Sometimes it's played in uh, C natural minor as well. But um, we'll talk about C minor and uh, keep it simple, but I want to give you some tips on ways to think about the content of notes you might use for your melodic lines. Features that are going to be more challenging um, are going to be the moments when we play the predominant in the key of C minor, which in this case is typically the flat six chord, and then going to the five chord. Okay, so there's where I would recommend spending a good amount of time uh, practicing and working out. Uh, some of these items. Okay, so let's talk about this uh, predominant chord. So if we're in the key of C minor, it's real common to play the A flat 7 with a sharp 11. Okay, so let's talk about what we might want to, th to think about on this particular chord. Um, a real fitting sound is is a, is a, a mode of the melodic minor. So in this case, it would be E flat melodic minor. So if I play this chord here, now if I play E flat melodic minor, I'm going to play the chord again. Okay, you'll hear kind of how the, how it's compatible. So when I uh, um, you know approach these things for for myself, I think in terms of or maybe not even thinking, but but I kind of process it in terms of um, what is the sound on the chord. So I, I like to think directly to the chord. So I'm not going to be thinking of uh, really E flat melodic minor, although I may be in it. Use a, using those notes. So, you know, I'm just kind of sitting down, th and then you're thinking about it, talking out loud here, and saying, okay, yeah, that's E flat melodic minor. But really, what we want to do is, is, or what I would recommend doing is thinking directly to this chord and re really using the same notes, but understanding how those relate to this. So we end up. With a, a mixolydian sound that has a raised fourth, right? So the mixolydian would sound like this, and then the lydian dominant, which is a mixolydian with a raised fourth, would sound like this. It's very similar, but it's that note, right? So w when you go through it, you know, try to try to think about. 
you know, those notes, you know, and maybe harmonize a few of them and get in to what that whole sound is like. Okay. Uh, now some, you know, kind of different approaches to, to thinking about that. Um, it is going to be helpful to think about your tonic and, and what that is doing to the uh, the tonic kind of kind of chord. So if we're thinking, you know, in terms of maybe flat three, flat seven, the C minor, you know, what does what does this uh, this chord do to that? Um, so I hope I hope you can follow this. But basically, I'll, I'm going to play the um, the the mode that with the tonic note would would start on for E flat melodic minor so okay so then you know the the benefit of that is you're you're still anchor, anchoring yourself into the the tonic and you're you're seeing how you're just accommodating the chord uh, that's happening there and since they share the C note um, it's going to work out pretty well. So I would really recommend doing that. So that's, that's like a um, kind of like a Locrian mode, but with a um, D natural rather than D flat. So. So that's going to be an area where you're going to want to um, to work at and and get that happening to set up the next chord, which is the five chord. Taking the scales and, and sort of this awareness or knowledge of where things are on the fingerboard to create uh, lines and um, create a, a, uh, a sort of a, a composed uh, piece of music, but uh, spontaneous, right? So, uh, so that is remember the kind of main main priority is to internalize these chords and shapes and things and kind of get it out. So let's get into this five chord here. A lot we can do on this, uh, but let's take a look at one of the first things that might come to mind, which would be to play the C harmonic minor. Okay. Now we got another problem with uh, anchoring to C harmonic minor is that the C is going to be a dissonance on the G7. So there again, the importance of being aware of how uh, these scales relate to particular chords, right? So here we have right, this 
these are our chord tones. Right, so we want to either kind of land on those on maybe strong beats, depending on the effect that you're going for. But as far as outlining the chord changes, uh, we you know, really want to hit these uh, these chord tones in order to suggest the chord, if that's what we're trying to do. Okay, so that's called Phrygian dominant. Now, aside from from that kind of basic, back to the basics here, uh, the the main part of the tune, focusing on flat three and flat seven on on the C minor, as well as on the F minor. Flat three and flat seven are going to give you um, the most consonant in sort of sounds. Uh, at times, you may also draw a little tension into the four chord by creating a secondary dominant five of the four, right? So. So there you might use a uh, Phrygian dominant, or something like that. And then, um, of course, there are other uh, types of scales that we can use for the five chord and uh, or different kinds of colors that we can use, but I won't get into that right now. Uh, but I will mention that I'm uh, putting together uh, a PDF that I'm going to uh, plan to release later this week. I also plan to work on a uh, video coming out here um, by the end of the week if all goes to plan. But uh, thanks so much for checking out this uh, podcast and uh, video version of this is available uh, to members of the Lessons and Talks on the uh, YouTube channel uh, at Fretprints. All right, have a great practice session. I'll see you all in the next one.